Hi, welcome to another episode of Periodic Perfection. Today we're going to be talking about matter. So matter, you might think you know what matter is, and I guarantee you if you don't, you will by the end of this lesson. And the thing I want you to remember is that matter, well, it matters. So matter is anything that has mass and has a volume. So essentially it's anything that has mass and takes up space within the world around us. Well, what could that include? Can you think of an example of something that could be matter? Well, your desk could be matter. Your pen could be matter. Well, is matter. The air around you, heck, even my cup of tea. That's matter. Mmm, certainly matters to me. So, remember, mass is the amount of matter in an object. How much matter is in that thing? Now, remember, the mass of a sample of matter is constant. It's not going to change unless we physically alter that matter in some way. We cut it up, have it, quarter, etc., um, grind part of it away, pour some of it off. That matter isn't going to change its mass. Now, weight, on the other hand, is the effect of the pull of gravity on an object. And that's the reason why you will have exactly the same mass on Earth as you have on the moon, but your weight would be different because there is a reduced pull of gravity on the moon. Remember, volume is the space that an object occupies. How much space that object takes up, that's its volume. Now, we've got a couple of different types of matter. These are terms that are gonna be really important to us. The first one is homogeneous. A homogeneous substance is any substance in which the particles are completely uniformly mixed or which has a uniform composition throughout the entire substance. Some examples of homogeneous substances would be like a solution like my tea. My tea is a homogeneous substance. All the particles of tea in the water are evenly mixed. Mm. Salt water would also be an example of a homogeneous mixture. Pure water would also be homogeneous, but it's not a mixture. It's one substance. All the particles are evenly mixed throughout. The composition is uniform. Now, heterogeneous, on the other hand, is kind of the opposite of homogeneous. A heterogeneous mixture is a mixture in which the substances are not uniformly mixed or where we have varying composition. Now, a lot of people think of this as you can look at it and you can see the different particles, but that's not the case. In a heterogeneous mixture, the particles are not uniformly mixed. It may not necessarily be visible to the naked eye. An example of this would be really any mixture, not including classic solutions, like a chocolate chip cookie. Well, a chocolate chip cookie has chocolate chips in it. They're definitely not uniformly mixed throughout. If it was, it would just be a chocolate cookie. Ice in a glass of soda. If you pour soda in a glass of ice, the ice will tend to float to the top. The soda will fill up the surrounding space. You're going to have areas where you have solid water, that's your ice, and areas where you have only cola. Until that ice melts completely, and once it melts completely, if you give it a stir, now it will be homogenous. So let's talk a little bit about generalized classifications of matter. When we talk about matter, we're usually talking about different elements. Elements are substances that cannot be broken down or decomposed by chemical means. If you look over at my periodic table, hopefully the one you have in front of you as well, you'll see there are 91 naturally occurring elements. Now you might ask, but this periodic table goes all the way up to 118. Everything above element 91 is artificially produced. It is essentially man-made. All elements are considered to be pure substances. Now, that means that there's only one type of matter in that substance. If I have a lump of pure gold, the only thing in it is the element gold. OK, 
okay? So that would be a pure substance. Now, another term we need to know is the atom. The atom is the smallest quantity of an element that still retains the properties of that element. You can have a single atom of gold. You aren't gonna be able to see it, but it does retain all the properties of a chunk of gold, okay? Meaning it has the same density, has the same mass, etc. Now, when we're writing symbols for elements, something I just wanna get out of the way and I want you to understand. The first letter of an element is always capitalized. So when you're looking at a compound or you're looking at a string of elements, you can always tell how many elements you have by simply counting up the capitalized letters. The second letter, if there is one, is always lowercase. There is never an exception to this. So for example, go to your periodic table and tell me what is the symbol for gold? Well, if you found it correctly, the symbol for gold is AU, which comes from the Latin for aurum, or like aura, the sun. What would be the symbol for helium? Well, the symbol for helium would be HE, uppercase H, lowercase E. What about the symbol for neon? The symbol for neon is going to be uppercase N, lowercase E, N E for neon. It is not just N, capital N. Capital N is the element nitrogen. So you see the symbols and their element names are very specific and they do matter. How many different elements would you say are in this example of sodium hydrogen carbonate? That's the name of this compound. Well, the answer to that is there are four different elements in this substance. We have each of our capital letters. That's what I'm looking for to tell me how many elements are in the compound. The first one is Na, which is sodium. Next, we have hydrogen. Sorry, that's a little small. Next, we have carbon. And beside that, we have oxygen. A little bit later, we're gonna talk about what those numbers mean, okay? But for now, suffice it to say, you have four different elements in this compound. 